Welcome to the Faithful Farmstead, where we as a family are reclaiming our roots. Today, we are reclaiming growing our own food on our own property. Follow along for the story. If you're wanting to do meat birds someday, this is a great place to start. We're gonna give you all the tips, how we got there, how it happened, what we're doing. Today was the day, the long awaited day that our family has been dreaming about for many, many years. And that was putting meat birds on pasture. If you're unfamiliar with the term meat bird, it is just a chicken that you plan on butchering. <laughs> this is a big part of us reclaiming our roots. Our grandparents, mine and Clint's, both butchered chickens did that whole process and then our parents didn't do it and when one generation it was kind of lost and so we are reclaiming that and starting this back up with our family to grow food on our property. That's one of the main reasons we moved here. So. This is a big deal. <laughs> Behind me here is our garage. It's where we've had our meat birds for the last three weeks. If you missed the video of us bringing them home, go check out that video. But it's been a little bit over three weeks. You wanna wait for their to be mostly feathered out. We've had really warm nights coming up. The days are really warm. And in all honesty, the garage reeks <laughs> because there's no airflow in there. And you know, with any animals, you're gonna have smell. So having it in a confined space just makes it extra smelly when there's 30 birds and a little tiny brooder. So we are ready to get them out onto pasture. We purchased a chicken tractor soon after we moved in. We were on the hunt for deals and this deal came up on Facebook Marketplace that we could not resist. So we got the chicken tractor way in advance knowing we would definitely use it this spring. We're putting them out on the pasture today and we're gonna rotate them until butcher day, which right now, with the big reds, it's 12 weeks. So from the time that you get them. So we are butchering them sometime in June, which will be great because the Homestead Festival will be coming up and we're planning on utilizing all those resources and learning more and being inspired and coming home and butchering our own birds. So that'll be fun. One of the reasons that we went with the big red broilers was because we wanted to have a little bit more of a hardy bird, it being our very first time raising meat birds. The Cornish cross can be a little bit more finicky. Like if you don't butcher them when they need to be butchered, their legs can break and there could just be complications where the big reds are more of like a foraging bird. Um, they're a little bit more of a hardy bird. And so I wanted to do that for the first time. And at some point we probably will try Cornish cross. We're excited excited to try both and kind of compare and see what we like. We do have a decent amount of pasture here. So the big red running them on pasture makes sense. Sick. I don't want them to fly out of here, so just hold on to her. Okay, but hold on. Three little birds. 
They're in the tractor, and I'm so excited. There is just something about being able to look out the window and see a dream that was in your heart for so many years be literally sitting in your back pasture. So this is a big moment for us. The kids are excited. Um, Clint and I were <laughs> texting later on then of just like, we have meat birds in the pasture. Uh, the kids are excited and the dog is like super protective and just wants to hang out. So. I don't st we still don't know if she thinks they're a treat and she wants to eat them or if she's just fiercely protecting them. But y'all, this is a sight to see. They're just basking in the sun, foraging, eating food. The next thing I'm gonna do here is we are going to move the egg layers into the old the brooder that the meat birds were in. Um, the egg layers are growing definitely a lot slower. Uh, last year, I think we kept our egg layers in the brooder for about six weeks. So they still have a couple more weeks. We're gonna keep them nice and cozy in the garage, give them a little bit more space until they feather out a little bit more. And then we'll introduce them with the big chickens. Uh, we'll show you how we're gonna do that too. It works pretty well to avoid fighting and all that stuff when you introduce a new flock. So let's move over to the chicks. Birds. You saw that video yet? And we did. So, woo! That made birds. I don't think that our dog would actually eat them but she's also a dog and everything loves chicken. So we put her outside. We're gonna get the rest of these meat birds or rest of these egg layers in here. Moving over to the chicks. We just gave them some fresh bedding, gave them some fresh water and feed, put the heat lamp back in there and they'll be cozy and fine in there. The kids and I will every day grab a bunch of like clover and different grasses and stuff and just throw it in there and they scratch around for all the little bugs and they'll eat the clover and stuff like that. So that gives them something green while they're in there. I don't know, it just makes me feel better. I don't know if it's necessary. <laughs> Meat birds are on pasture. Egg layers are in their new happy little home. So thanks for joining along with our family. There is lots more content coming with what we'll do with butchering, butchering day, um, and gardens, the gardens are coming together, but we are slowly reclaiming this property by reclaiming our roots, and it's pretty exciting.